are yeah. you? Cap <laughs> <laughs> Captain, are you? <laughs> Captain George Poole. I've uh, been driving dive boats in the Keys for a lot of years. Uh, since 2019, I used to teach at Key West College. Taught basic seamanship, coastal nap. When we moved uh, up to Darien, Georgia about a year ago, I had the opportunity to apply for this job. So what better way to come with the people that are trying to make a difference on the water and, and uh, get involved and uh, represent. So I applied, got the job, and uh, next thing you know, I'm driving a brand new 52 by 20 uh, power catamaran that's set up for ocean research. Basically, you're looking at a research vessel setup, so we can do multiple platforms, multiple things. The biggest thing that you'll see is the A-frame. This A-frame will swing all the way back, and we can run scientific equipment off of it. We can launch multiple types of vehicles if we need to off of it. Uh, ROVs, uh, side scan sonar, that kind of equipment. And also, you can run special scientific equipment off of the scientific winch here. We can provide power to the systems that we're dropping down there. So you can look at different water quality issues and so forth um, and do any kind of testing you want. This is one of the biggest things that sets it apart, having a 3,000 uh, lift crane that you can actually utilize from that, that standpoint, that's huge. And it gives scientists what they need to do. We also have a clean power system on board so that you don't have to worry about burning up stuff on your, on your vessel if you get a bad hot lead or something. We provide straight clean power to all our scientists so they can plug right in and they don't have to worry about failure or issues with that. Those are huge when it comes to research vessels. We also have a crane located up here as well so we can utilize that for other equipment. One of the great features here, we, they kind of thought about it at All American and developed this dive bench platform. Along with this platform, this actually folds down and you can then take your dinghy over here and put it right on top. And then you can run multiple dive platforms while you're out there, which is a great feature. You can run multiple dive teams, multiple platforms out there and cover more ground. You know, missed by an inch, missed by a mile. We can put divers where we need to put them and find the data we need to find. The other thing that's unique about this boat is your stations. So I have a complete helm station here aft. And uh, it was wonderful yesterday in our, our first mission out for me to watch our divers go in the water and have full control of the vessel is nice. There are no mooring buoys out there. So you're, you're hot dropping your divers. Of course, before I let divers go in the water, we all communicate and I go, you know, I'm dead stick. There's no energy. Matter of fact, there's a button on the con helm control. I'll show you. It'll throw the engines into a warm mode where I could throw them all the way forward or aft, it's not gonna turn the screws on the, on the vessel. It'll lock them down so it's just revving the engines, but it's nice, uh, so there's no accidental issue there. The helm is locked, there's nothing that can happen, it's wonderful. Your engines, there are no thrusters on this vessel. You don't need it, it's easy enough to move. But you've got, you know, you can take control here, you can sink your engines here. You've got a troll mode on here where it'll lock down your RPMs so that you can't over rev the vessel when you're operating it. I don't really use it. The currents here are kind of nasty. You need the, the juice. Uh, but you've got the, here's the warm mode. So whenever I see divers getting ready and I'm giving them the standby, I pop the warm mode. So even if I hit something by accident, I rocked, I moved. Screws aren't going to turn on the vessel. It locks, it, the engines are rev, but it doesn't put my divers in danger. And that's cool. Yeah, here's your helm. So you can actually turn it with this. It's a tiller system. So when I take control and I go here, then all I gotta do is kick it back to center. It will center the, the rudder up. So this is the where you take control of it right here. This is the sink. You can sink the engines up so that they're gonna run consistent together. That's great. You know what a mess that can be. Warm is where you can just lock those down and it's only gonna rev the engines. It will not turn the propellers over. And then of course the troll mode just limits your uh, max RPMs. And then here you've got uh, upper helm station, which is another great thing. I Getting underway and coming in, I prefer to be up here. I don't like being down on the bridge. Yeah. And once again, same situation with your tiller right here. I'll let this come up and then we'll have this. And then I've got my total engine displays up here. I've got them shut down downstairs, but that gives me my hours and my burn rates and um, your temperature, of course. So everything's wonderful there and easy. I've really got to clean her up. But yeah, you want to go to the engine rooms? There's a nice feature, nice little hot water shower in the back. 
y'all know from diving, it's like, oh my God. Hi, my name is Lieutenant Cassidy Ring. I am the Vessel Operations Coordinator for Gray's Reef National Marine Sanctuary and a NOAA Corps officer. Um, I've been stationed at Gray's Reef for two years and I will be here for a total of three years running our small boat program and dive operations. And I've been with the NOAA Corps for about five years now. Um, so right now we are inside the research vessel Gannett. It's our brand new 52 foot uh, research vessel for Gray's Reef and this is our dry lab that we're currently standing in. So this is our main area for scientific operations, um, our science teams to come in with all their equipment, get set up. We have a large workspace for them as well as um, a readout station for our scientific winch that we have outside so they can see like the depth, um, different temperatures of the water, all that right here inside the boat. So over here we have another working station for our science team uh, where they can kind of spread out anything they might need such as like fish identification books depending on what type of scientists we have on board. A lot of times we have divers but sometimes we'll have people here for water quality sampling or um, marine mammal monitoring, anything like that. So another workspace for them. This is also great for um, our vessel operations team prior to going out um, offshore for our navigation planning so we can kind of spread out any charts or booklets that we need here, um, go back through our vessel ops plans to make sure that we have a safe operation. Um, over here is kind of like our little sete area. It stores all of our life jackets in case there was an emergency you have to abandon ship, um, but it also provides another working area, a space for people to sit and have lunch, um, kind of relax, hang out a little bit. And then um, after that, we've got the bridge up here where all of the marine operations take place. Here we have our security cameras so that he can see, you know, safety um, on deck. You can see the whole back deck. You can see the engine rooms to see if there's anything going wrong in there. Um, the A-frame and kind of monitor the outside of the boat while also focusing on navigating and driving it. Um, we've got two navigation screens here. To, with our track lines to get us out to where we're going. Um, multiple different ways to steer the vessel. So we've got hand steering with the helm. We also have our toggle steering right here. Um, and then there's an autopilot setting as well. And then in case if we ever lost steering up here, we do have the capabilities if you go all the way in the back of the vessel um, to go down into the lazarette and actually like manually steer the rudders. Um, hopefully we never have to do that, but we are capable of doing that. Um, we also have all of our electronic control systems here. So this can control anything from the microwave to the engines. Like you've got everything right here all in one place for our breaker panels. Um, over here we have our alarm systems. So this tells us if our um, any of our bilges have water in them, it'll identify which one. Right now we have it set to just show environmental factors. So it's showing like the wind speed, what time it is all that, but it's actually a touch screen um, and we can navigate to different tanks. So like our fuel tanks right now, you can see how full each fuel tank is. Uh, when you're moving, it'll calculate the distance you can go until the tanks are empty, all sorts of things there. Um, so lots of different controls up here, a whole bunch of different moving parts, um, emergency equipment. You got seats for your crew and lookout or any scientists that might wanna see what's going on up here. Um, yeah, and so next we have our lower birthing area down here. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze. Um, turn the lights on. So this is um, just for crew and it would be for if we have any operations going on that are multi-day that take us away from our home port. So for example, if a group up in Charleston wanted us to come and take them offshore, we would bring the boat up to Charleston and then each day would come into port in Charleston and our crew would be able to sleep on the boat overnight. Um, this isn't for like overnight operations offshore, it's just for inshore for the crew so that we can move with the boat for different projects and help scientists up and down kind of the east coast, the southeast coast. Um, so we have three spaces for bunks and then we have this extra kind of like lounge storage area and each bunk has their own air conditioning control lights and um, like a plug for to plug your phone charger and like a little shelf to store anything like a book or whatever. That's very 
And we also have our like emergency escape hatch, fire alarm, carbon monoxide alarm, um, and then in this back panel here, fire extinguishers. So it's a neat little spot. And the beds are comfortable. I did test them out on our transit up from Florida when we picked the vessel up to bring it to Savannah. So they're very good quality. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's the inside of the vessel for our working areas. For some of the more like, I guess, fun areas, I think people think food is fun. Uh, we have a galley back here. So uh, just a small little area, microwave, coffee pot, and full-size fridge and freezer with a cupboard so we can bring snacks. Everyone um, can bring a lunch for a full day. Most of our operations are 10 to 12 hours. So people can have plenty of space for food. They won't go hungry. A lot of times our divers work up an appetite, so they appreciate having a place to have like a cold lunch stored. Um, and then we also have our head in here, which converts into a full shower. Um, so our divers also appreciate that because on our old vessel, we did not have like hot water or anything for them to use to get a fresh water rinse after diving. And a lot of times, especially when we do our fall and winter dives, it can get a little chilly. So it's nice for them to be able to, when they're done with the operations, come in and rinse off and be nice and clean. And my favorite part is that it has access from the outside so they won't be bringing all their salty, stinky dive gear into the main area of the vessel. They can come in from outside, rinse it off, and then go back out before coming in after changing out of their dive gear. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs>